All right, guys, last video. So this will cover slides 21 through 26. And let's go ahead and knock this out. So these last couple of figurative language are kind of like idiom and cliche are slightly difficult if you do not know some common examples. And I'll talk to you more about that when we get to it. So the first one is imagery. Imagery is very straightforward. It's just language that appeals to your senses. Um, in particular, sometimes it's called sensory language. So, you know, your senses are taste, sound, sight, smell, and touch. So imagery uses very precise words and um, verbiage is the best word for it. It uses very precise verbiage in order to kind of create this picture in your mind. Um, so that you can really and truly experience what you're reading, not just see words on a page, like you can actually see it. So this is where you get really good poems and really good pieces of literature. This is where you get that, well, I can see it playing out in my head. That means that that author is really good at that. So here's an example. So what I want you to tell me is what sense is it trying to appeal to? So go look at it and read it and kind of understand what it's talking about number one and then think about what words it's using and exactly what it's trying to do. So the only downside with imagery that I would think about is the fact that if you don't have that experience sometimes it's hard for you to understand what they're trying to create. So if you don't have this experience it might be a little bit harder for you to imagine it which is where good authors can write it in a way that it becomes universally understood. So identify and understand your own. So I have imagery over here in this lovely um, stanza from our poem. So just highlight it in purple. Again, you guys know how to do this. Click, click, highlight, highlight a tool, right? So find the imagery and then tell me what sense is it appealing to. So if you forgot your senses, taste, sound, sight, smell, and touch. Whew, I have a hiccup. Excuse me, everyone. All right. And then we have our symbolism. So this is the one that I told you. Um, if you don't know what some things are, um, it makes it a little bit harder. So symbolism is something that we as a class will identify as we go. Um, because some things are like universal symbols and then sometimes authors create their own symbols and they go from there. So up here we have um, a couple examples. So blue sometimes represents peacefulness or calm, but then at the same time you can be blue and be sad. So, so it depends on how they use the color. Roses are often for romances. Um, doves are for hope. Olive branches are for peace. So there's a whole bunch of different ones that are kind of universal and honestly they're illusions. And then of course you have some that are made up by the author, which would be where our example comes in. So I told you guys that it would come back. So here is our lovely lava. Now in this particular one I give you an example. So the song mentions his lava song. Um, so it is a symbol. It's a stand-in. It means something else for what a volcano is actually doing. So you just need to go watch it and kind of figure out, okay, he's playing his lava song. What is this volcano actually doing? And that's where your symbol comes in. As always, please come to Zoom class if you have any questions. We'll look at a lot of these things together. And that's it.